sound. Devo Jones with the pig six key. I don't kneel with the hard hit. Getting the ball back on offense. Watch Julio Jones keep moving the sticks. Calvin really in for the score. We came back. We up four. About to get in. Not victory stats. No coming back. We closing the door. A D L blackout. A D L blackout. What's going on, football fans? It's me, J.R. Clark, back again with another rendition of the Pound for Pound ATL. This time we're talking about coaches again. Uh, as I said we were going to do, we're going to talk about one coach a week until the end of the season or until we hire a, you know, a head coach, obviously. And then we'll talk about whoever we hire. Now, these guys that I'm coming at you with are not necessarily like my recommendations. I'm just trying to give you candidates that the mainstream media itself isn't necessarily talking about like you have your eric b enemies out there your robert slays those guys who are getting a lot of hype but i'm trying to bring some awareness to some guys who may not necessarily be getting the kind of hype that these other guys are getting or may even be forgotten or never even heard of so to speak kind of like last week with the matt campbell of iowa state now in doing my research on a particular coach, I actually started going down the rabbit hole for the coach that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I started looking at David Shaw of Stanford. Uh, he's been rumored for a few years now to potentially make the jump. But the more I looked into him, the more I was like, I don't think he will make the jump. A lot of these coaches, these head coaches that get in at these bigger programs, um, are less likely, in my opinion, to make the jump because of the kind of control that they have over the program, right? Uh, so they get the same kind of money that an NFL head coach gets. Maybe not exactly the same, but they get, you know, real good uh, similar money to what an NFL head coach gets, and they have more control over the program. So when you add those two things together, it's a combination that doesn't necessarily – lead to the NFL being enticing unless they're just wanting to, uh, you know, make their mark, so to speak, or prove that they can do it at the next level. The, uh, the, the draw just isn't necessarily there for every coach, especially when you have as much say in the program as you do when you're in college. Anyway, that was a long ramble to say that the what I ended up looking at was uh, the coach that we're talking about, not David Shaw, obviously, because I don't think he's going to leave Stanford. But the coach that I ended up looking at was Pep Hamilton. Now, Pep Hamilton isn't necessarily a hot name, which obviously is the point of doing this the series, but he's a name that intrigues me because when working with Andrew Luck, he produced one of the top offenses in the league. Um, he only coached Luck three years in the NFL, but he was specifically gone after when Arians left to go to be the head coach of the Cardinals. That's who they brought in to help continue the growth of Andrew Luck, and Andrew Luck had his best season under Pep Hamilton as the offensive coordinator. I mean, I think they ended up call, um, having a top five offense that year. But unfortunately, Pep Hamilton – what he wasn't necessarily good at or what he's had to learn with Andrew Luck is that he had to learn how to protect the quarterback from himself, right? And that was a, a hard lesson for him to learn, hence that Andrew Luck ends up you know, retiring a few seasons ago, uh, mainly due to being injured quite a bit. But since his time with Andrew Luck being in, at Stanford, and at uh, Indianapolis, he went on to be the OC, or, well, OC in title. I don't necessarily think he was the OC, really, for the Cleveland Browns uh, with Hugh Jackson. Uh, he was the OC for one year. They went 1-15, and and he was kind of the scapegoat. But it's really kind of hard to pin it on him in that year because – I think he had like five or six different quarterbacks, everybody from RG3 to Cody Kessler. I mean, and a handful of different people in between. So it's really kind of hard to get a real good rhythm going on offense when you're having to deal with that kind of personnel switching. 
Now, from uh, Cleveland, he went to be the assistant head coach and passing game coordinator at Michigan. Now, there's conflicting reports about whether he left Michigan, resigned, or got bought out, one or the other. But Jim Harbaugh thought enough of him to give him a $4 million uh, contract, which is pretty good for an assistant coach in the college ranks. It's actually really good. Um, But needless to say, after, I think, two years of being the passing game coordinator, uh, Pep Hamilton left Michigan to then become the head coach and GM of the XFL Washington Defenders. Now, why is that important? Because that gives him that gave him a unique experience of truly running a uh, a ball club on a professional level. Now, albeit it was the XFL, and obviously that league failed in and of itself, but you can't you know you can't put that on Pep Hamilton. You could put that on the coronavirus and the uh, bad business decisions, so to speak, but you can't put the XFL's failure on Pep Hamilton, obviously. But in the five games, as the uh, head coach of the D.C. Defenders, his quarterbacks, well, not quarterback, but his offense was uh, one of the better ones in the league, and they were 3-2, and two, if I'm not mistaken, with Cordell Patterson completing close to 60% of his uh, passes which is pretty good for a guy who was considered, you know, who drummed out of the league and um, was more of a run-first quarterback. Well, I hate to say, I hate to use that kind of term, run-first quarterback, but he was known more for not necessarily his touch passes, you know, uh, coming from Ohio State and an Urban Meyer-led offense. Uh, We all know what that kind of produces, you know, the Tim Tebow's and, um, Braxton Millers, those kind of guys who come into the league and don't necessarily find their place. Um, but anyway, back to Pep Hamilton. Pep Hamilton, uh, some of his pros is he has a lot of experience. He's uh, been at the coaching, the college ranks, and the pro ranks. Um, and, and all along his stops, he's always been on the offensive side of the ball, whether it's a passing game coordinator or an OC. Uh, And as his times as OC, he has produced uh, top flight NFL offenses that are uh, balanced, which is uh, a good thing when you're looking at what the team has right now, what our team has right now, which is a pass-heavy coordinator. I think all of us would like a little bit more balance to our particular uh, coordinator's philosophy. But what I see when I see Pep Hamilton is a guy who has been in a lot of different situations, coached under a lot of coaches. Right right now, he's currently the quarterback's coach of the L.A. Chargers. He's one of the reasons why Justin Herbert is looking as good as he is early on in this season. Um, he's got Herbert playing pretty much lights out uh, for a rookie with a you know hampered uh, roster. But uh, and you can see that he has learned his lessons, so to speak, from uh, Andrew Luck to Justin Justin Herbert, you know, convincing Herbert to, you know, get down more and not not take necessarily uh, the big hits and the big shots that Andrew Luck liked to take. Um, So you have to figure that that was probably a direct result of his time, you know, with Andrew Luck. So I think Pep Hamilton could be now this is for some of y'all this isn't going to be a ringing endorsement but think about what the man did for the for this organization i think pep hamilton could be a offensive version of mike smith okay mike smith came in at a tumultuous time stabilized this franchise got this franchise you know gave him an identity and got him pointed in the right direction now his later years i have argued and other people could argue that he kind of lost his identity and let guys like a dirt cutter and a Mike Nolan uh, steer him away from what he wanted to be. Uh, I'm not saying that that's going to necessarily happen with Pep Hamilton, but I think Pep Hamilton could come in and be yet another stabilizing force with an off with a mind for an offense, and also most importantly, the part that intrigues me about it is a mind that is used to and capable of grooming young quarterbacks as many of you have pointed out 
time and time again, <coughs> Matt Ryan's not going to be here forever. You have three more years, two, three more years of him for sure, uh, possibly five, but I want to say, you know, somewhere in that three to four range, and you're really going to have to start considering uh, drafting his replacement. And in doing so, I would like to have a coach that has groomed young quarterbacks and can groom young quarterbacks. I think that that's something that would be important to have on the staff. Uh, and given his time in the XFL, you know, he already comes with the experience of being a head coach, uh, albeit it was like a taste of, a, of being a head coach. But plenty of people speak highly of Pep Hamilton, and uh, he wouldn't necessarily be a flashy hire. But like I said before, I think he could be an offensive version of a Mike Smith, which, let's be real, folks, uh, much as we might like to talk crap about him, old Safari Hat wasn't that bad of a coach. And, uh, you know, he, he brought this, this team – a lot of success, and I think Pep Hamilton could do the same thing. All right, well, I appreciate it. Uh, as always, uh, y'all check back next week for the next head coach. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please uh, put it down in the comments down below. Uh, we're getting into the season where you're going to start seeing rumors and reports coming out. There was one about uh, Nathaniel Hackett uh, that Jason Lockenfor of CVS put out there. Uh, and I may end up doing a video for uh, for Hackett since since that rumor's been put out there, but it's a little early in the game to be jumping on rumors. Um, anyway, y'all can always follow me on Twitter. I'm at Grim111128. Uh, That's G-R-I-M-M-1128. Give me a follow there. Like, share, comment, all that good fun stuff. And uh, let, let me know what you think about Pep Hamilton. Was he, was he even a guy that you were thinking of? Because that's kind of the aim of this series is to get y'all thinking about some coaches that aren't necessarily right in front of your face. But anyway, appreciate it folks. And as always Falcons fans rise up.